everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these, I'm calling them my deluxe selection boxes, but they will also work perfectly as a storage for your craft room or even a jewellery box. So I'm keeping mine as a selection box. So what I've done here, beautiful big bow, I've got this lovely big gift tag, although we'll probably take that off and put it on the gift bags that these will go into with the matching papers. But you open it up, it's got a Velcro dot, I've got this lovely tag there inside and then you slide out the trays to reveal even more chocolates but what I thought would look nice is if you put a mirror here and I do have some somewhere and I've been looking for them just to show as an example I got them from the works I think you got a pack of four for maybe 199 something like that I'll try and link them below those ones but they're just little square mirrors and you could put a mirror there if you want to give someone maybe it's a you know a younger daughter and you could buy her lots of the fun just costume jewelry like in Claire's you could fill this with jewelry little rings little mirror there maybe some little lipsticks I think it would make a really lovely gift and then it's a lovely little kind of storage piece afterwards but like I said this is going to be my deluxe selection box I'm making one more because I need three and they're going to go to couples my friends that are couples so there will be chocolates for one of them on one side and then chocolates for the other on the other side and then more here if that's what I end up doing I'm going to be changing them around because I've got a, I've got too much chocolate right now and it's actually scaring me because I could just eat it all but I'm not. Once these are done, they are sealed up, they're going in the gift bags and that's it, I'm not touching them. But they just slide in really nicely and then you just bring down the front and that's that one. And then I'll just bring in this one here again, those lovely big bows, just open it up. If you're in the UK, I picked these up on sale in the co-op. They were £2.50 each. Now, you know how much chocolate is. The chocolate bars in the UK now, individually, are in a ridiculous amount. Like Some of them are like over a pound for a normal chocolate bar, which I remember being like 25, 30p when I was younger. So I didn't, I was trying to look at ways to be able to fill this with so much chocolate without costing me too much. So all of this galaxy here that you see came from this galaxy selection box for £2.50. So I thought that was actually really good. And then I've bulked it out with this one here. You've got the, uh, the Mars, so I put the Mars bar. And then I picked up the gold, you know, the coins that we, we like to use. And then there's the Maltesers, yeah, I've got the Malteser one there and there. But, and then I've got more chocolates coming, but I've also put in some coins here. So you can make like a treasure box, you know, this, if you've got a, just someone who loves pirates and you could just do so many fun things with this. And it doesn't have to be, def you know, Christmas paper. But also they hold two layers um, on the top as well. So, you know, you've got double here and double on the base. There's a ripple in here just to give you ideas of the length. Um, I've got bags of Maltesers. Yeah, you get the idea. So if you are someone that likes to do a homemade Christmas and or you just want to give a token gift and just, you know, we are all watching our money. We don't want to go crazy sometimes. And I think people can sometimes lose touch with what Christmas is actually really about and it's being with your family. So these are just my little token gifts. The gift, fa the gift cards are just going to have a nice little amount to go and have a nice coffee and maybe some lunch, you know? So it's nothing extravagant, but it's just a nice gesture. And I think that the boxes are really, really sweet. So I hope you like them and I hope you enjoy this fun tutorial. Okay, for this one here, I use the Festive Folly 12 by 12 pad, really gorgeous papers. And then for the second one, so that one there, you can see it's beautiful, love that paper on top. I use the Christmas Tales, so I've really been able to kind of use some more papers out of these pads. I'm going to be using a lot for gift bags, which I'll be doing some tutorials for. And then this one I'm using Magical Stories, so I will link all of those paper pads as, al as always. Okay, so what I'm going to do is talk you through the two trays and the case and then we can do all those little bits later. So for the lid and the base, you will need two pieces that are seven, this is seven and three quarters by eight and a quarter. Along the seven and three quarters side, you just want to score it two inches, okay? And you want two pieces of those, I won't put that in there, you want two pieces. Now I've already gone ahead and popped these mats on. So this is going to be my lid. So it's going to flip up. So this is where I'm going to have that little message inside. For these mats, you want two pieces. In fact, you'll probably want three, but I need to double check that size because I couldn't measure it inside those ones because they've already been obviously put together. But just do two for the minute. The, the measurements will be in my blog. Two pieces that are five and a half by eight, I believe. Yeah. Okay. 
and that's the pattern paper, so two pieces. So this is actually, the polka dot's the reverse of this Christmas tree one. I love the Christmas tree one. It's one of my favourite ones from that pad. So two pieces, fold and burnish. So that's that one all ready to go. Then you want two pieces. So I'm doing a few block colours for mine. The other two I've done, the two trays on top and the base tray, all the same colour. But my base tray, that big one, is going to be in green. Okay, but you can do obviously any colours. For the top two uh, trays, you want two pieces of eight by nine and a half. Okay, and on any other side, on basically on all four sides, you're just going to score at one and two inches. These are reinforced, it's nice and strong. Rotate one and two inches, rotate one and two, and rotate one and two. So you will have those score lines, okay? And do that on two pieces. I've already gone ahead and done this tray, okay? I thought I put the paper in there, no, I've stuck it down. Oh, there it's there. And um, yeah, do that. So you, I've already done that one, so you don't need to see me do both. But then to decorate the inside, because I've done this because it's nice, obviously, when they remove the chocolate, they see something. But also, if you are going to have it as more of a decorative storage piece, then you, you know, you're know you probably likely to see that more. So this is three and seven eighths of an inch by five and three eighths of an inch, and you want two pieces, okay? And again, just fold and burnish all of those score lines. All right, so you'll have two of them, two pieces of that, and then you want one piece of nine and a half by 12. I'm also using the little cardstock, okay, so it's that lovely strong cardstock. So that's actually the default width, the nine and a half, and then um, I just trimmed it down to 12. And again, doesn't matter what size you, side you start on, you just want to score at one and two inches on all four sides. So all of this stuff, it's very, very easy to do. It's just putting it all together in the right order. And there's a couple of little hinges. I'm just going to go over them because I don't think I've done them that good. There we go. Um, also, what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to make gift bags with the matching pattern paper to put them in. So I'm not going to wrap them. And because they're only held together with that Velcro dot, I don't want to add sellotape to them and things like that. So they're going to go in a gift bag, which I will then, you know, obviously seal better. And um, I may well even take those gift tags that I've put on the tops of those boxes and put it on the gift bag. But I just think it'd be a nice little gift like that. And then if they do want to keep the box or something, some people use the boxes at Christmas to put their Christmas decorations in or something. They may well, you know, do it for that. I don't mind what people do with their stuff. But OK, so one piece of that. And then while I've got my scoreboard, these are going to be for our hinges so the drawers can slide out. So these are two pieces that are one and seven eighths of an inch by three. And along the three inch side, you want to score at one and a half. So just right down the middle, two pieces and just fold and burnish. And then if you do want to do that closure that I've done on the front, then you'll want this piece here. And this is a piece of three and a quarter by one inch. And along the three and a quarter, you want to score at half an inch. And just fold and burnish. You're going to fold and you're going to score the, the top bit, but I want you to do it just so I know it's all going to fit. Then you'll want some more pattern paper for mats and layers, but uh, for the minute I want to see what it's going to look like before I decide the, you know, what ones I'm going to use. But this piece is for the back and this is eight by two. All right. And then this is for that ledge, that little lip where the boxes will rest on. And what I've done here is I've cut six strips from the same cardstock. So those of you that have that little cardstock, you know how strong it is. I've glued these all together using my Kalau glue and it is solid. This is just as thick as my, you know, my grey board. These here measure half an inch by, I think it was, yeah, seven and seven eighths. And you want six pieces and just stick them on top. And you'll see there just how thick that becomes. And that's enough. If you feel you want to make your ledge thicker, you can do. Add some more to it. So when you do go to, and you can do it right at the end as well. So if you put it all together and you feel that your trays are maybe dipping, you can just add a few more layers onto that and that might help you, you know, get them all straight again. Okay, so we're going to do a bit of cutting. I'm going to start with this one. But you're going to cut this the, the same way as you cut the base, all right? They're all the same, it's just a reinforced tray. So along the short side, so you wanna do the short side on the small trays and the short side on this long, this big piece as well. You'll have the four squares in the left and the right hand corners here. You wanna cut up the score lines that go past the first one and cut up to the second. So I'm going past that first score line up to the second. So you'll see what they look like there. Remove the outer two, remove the top one so you're just left with that tab 
just there on its own. And then just tidy off the edges, just take a little kind of wedge off of those kind of outer ones here, just so they kind of fold inside the box easily. And then that one you can take a nice chunk off of each side, because that's your tab to glue it together. Okay, so do that again on this corner here. So again, I'll just, just show that again for anybody new. You just cut up past the first score line to the second, remove the outer two, and then just remove that top one. And then again, just take a little bit off of there and there, and then take a nice chunk off of those. Okay. Then flip it right the way around and do exactly the same on this end here. And you're going to do that exactly the same on this larger one. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of that. Okay, so you will have two pieces like this and one piece like this. Then we want to glue it together. So I'm just going to bring in my glue here. I'm going to use the Cosmic Shimmer one just because I can control how this comes out and it does grab very quickly but I'm going to use my Kalau for the larger areas because this is a water-based glue I don't like to use too much water-based glues because they do warp so I will go back to Kalau in a minute I do mix glues a lot in projects but this, this um, Cosmic Shimmer is very good for just getting that instant quick grab very very small amount so it's quite handy for tabs so I'm just going to pop a little bit on this one here and you're just bringing your tab under and around so you bring up those sides and just make sure you get a really nice right angle okay and it is key to make sure that this is nice and even and straight because obviously this is all on show and you want them to sit the same and to sit on that little ledge and all that kind of stuff so and then the other end here I'm just going to put the glue on both like I said, it's only a thin amount of glue because once we fold these pieces in to reinforce it, that's really what's going to hold it all together. These are just really helping it to get in that shape, but it's those reinforced pieces that will really kind of strengthen it. And Okay, so now we've got something like that. I just then just kind of push these out a little bit and then I'm going to bring the Kalau in. Anybody new thinking, well, why is she changing? This glue here is just amazing and it is a solvent-based glue and when it dries, it dries, it almost like puts a very thin sheet of cement between your cardstock. It doesn't warp because it's solvents, so there's no water in it, but it just is so stiff and so strong. So it's great for paper crafting. So I'm just gonna now pop some glue along there and along this one, this one, and that one. And then you just wanna fold them all in just kind of roughly for the minute, just kind of tack them in place like so. They kind of hold themselves in and then pop it on its side and just with your bone folder, go around and really crease those score lines and it will also spread out all that glue. Just go around a couple of times until that kind of grabs. I've put quite a lot on there so it does take a minute but it's, um, yeah, it's great stuff. And there you will have a really nice tray and when that glue dries it will become very very strong so you'll do two of them and then with that pattern piece of paper again I'm going to use my Kalau because this will add some nice strength to the base and then I'm just going to sit that in there it should be a real nice snug fit and just use your chisel end of your bone folder and you'll be able to get in there and pull that glue spread out Okay, so now I've got two really nice equal trays and then you want to do exactly the same again on the larger one. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue on these tabs. It's exactly the same process. So if you want to just rewind back to how i done that red tray, and you're just going to bring up your sides. When I've done the four sides, fold those out a little bit, put your glue and fold them in. Okay, so I'm going to get that one done. Okay, and there's my other tray. Next, you want to grab that strip here, 
and you want to stick it in the back long side of the tray so it's going to obviously be in this orientation here and you want to make sure when you stick it down that it is flush it has to be flush with the top of this if it's not then it's just not going to work it has to come up to that exact level there so I'm going to pop some glue on the back of this one and then just sit that in side there and just kind of put your finger up the top so it's resting and push it up so it hits your finger and just pop it on its side and just make sure that it is running perfectly with the top there and just make sure that you're happy where that is and that's yeah pop, maybe put a few pegs on there just so it can kind of you know stick down but that's fine that's not going to go anywhere now okay then I've got this piece of pattern paper to line that tray and this is seven and seven eighths of an inch by five and three yeah five and three eighths again I'm just going to pop oh I wonder whether that one would be better than trying to see kind of picture everything together that's going to come out like that do I prefer that one maybe I'll do that one actually because I've got that one on the back so let's flip that over Again, just spread all that out. Okay, so next you want to bring in these pieces. You're not really going to use the lid for the minute, but the base. So that's the one where you you wouldn't have put your detail, you know, your decoration on. What's going to happen is this tray is going to eventually we're going to stick it to the bottom of this piece. And what you should have is an overhang on all of your three sides. Okay, so you can just about see there's a white overhang there there and obviously there on the front okay but before we stick that down we need to attach these hinges to this back piece and then onto no just onto the back piece for the minute okay so <laughs> I want to make sure I get it in the right order because when I create things on my own before I do videos sometimes I forget that I'm going to film it and I just go ahead and do it and then I'm trying to work out the measurements when it's all put together and that's not always the best way so um Right, so what I'm doing here is I've popped glue over the, on one of them there, just make sure I put those, so I'm gonna work on this side. Now you wanna come in the same, so lay that tray down, and whatever the overhang is, make sure you've got evil, even white showing at both ends. So, get mine lined up here. So you can see that white there and there. You wanna stick this at the same so actually it's best if you just pop it around the corner of the tray there and then bring up the side. So try not to move the tray. This is just to stick this all down because we're going to be, um, well, I guess you could stick the tray down and just not attach it to the back. Maybe we could do that. I just want to make sure that um, you get the right distance. So can you see now that you will want to come in slightly? So I've come in about one eighth of an inch. Okay, so I'm going to take the tray away, maybe you can see there, so when I fold that red in, it's not right up to the edge, that's what you don't want to do. Okay, so when that goes in, because then the trays, we're going to attach the tray to the top half of this, which will allow it to come out. And the tray will rest on the sides of the base tray, and then when it comes in, it will rest on that ledge, and then the outside of the tray. Okay, so I guess you could stick the tray down. Let's have a go, and you can well, you, you know what to do, you can see what I'm doing, but you may find it easier to stick this tray down before you put that first hinge on because then I guess the tray won't move. So I just put this in place. So, yeah, so now I can kind of, I mean, I've already put that hinge in place, but pretend that one's not there. Make sure you've got even overhang and you want to put it right up to that score line and make sure you fold this up so that's obviously all straight as well but now I guess it is easier then to just add some glue to the next one on the other side like so and then all you have to do is sit it around the tray and then bring that one up and it's one and seven eighths high so that it sits slightly lower than this two inch piece. All right, I didn't want you to be able to see that. 
because I just thought if some people do stick it a little bit out or you know you've just you're not happy you don't have to worry about trimming it because it will be it's slightly reduced in size so you can't see it anyway but yeah so you might find it easier to line up your sides by sticking the tray down first or just do it the way that I done it but now see when that comes up you want it to wrap perfectly around that tray like so then with this pattern piece here which I gave you the measurements for earlier that should now sit perfectly in there no although because I've put that tray in oh no it's fine yeah just bring that up oh yeah no that fits fine and that just will then cover these hinges so I'm using the papers all from that pad so all the colors work but if you you know play around with whatever you have I'm just seeing now whether I want to do the same as that bauble hmm do I do the same see I wish I could have someone telling me now I'm kind of thinking I do the same do I do a contrast don't tell me if you don't like the way that I do it <laughs> so kind of no I'm gonna I'm gonna do contrast guys sorry if any of you are going stick with the baubles <laughs> no nope, I've done it now I've added glue but yeah just play around that's why I didn't want to kind of give all the measurements first because I needed to see what it looks like when it's all put together but now I can just slide that one in there and just make sure I get it right down so it runs with the top. I might have to trim it a little bit, I think, because I put the tray in this time before I didn't. But um, yeah, if it overhangs a little bit, which mine is, you do want to trim that off purely because you're going to be putting the lid over it and you don't want that to kind of interfere. So I'm just going to get my nice long scissors always go from underneath and then you can get it perfectly lined up with that white piece it's only a little slither but you might find that you do have a little bit sticking up there we go all gone and now what you want to do is add glue to the back of the box so I'm just going to add try and lift that up so you can see what I'm doing add the glue along there it's probably way too much but at least it'd be nice and strong. Oh. And then bring that up. And just spend some time, pop it on its side, just making sure that is really secure. And your hinges should come up nicely. So that's that's the most, if there is a difficult part of this, that's it. Or what we've just done then. It's just getting it all in that order. And I'm just going to make sure this is dry before I move on to the next bit. I've just remembered that's why I didn't do the tray with the glue. You forget this piece. So you want to stick this down before you stick the tray down. But I think, yeah, I can still get it in there. So all I'm going to do is just pop a little bit of glue. So just that scored piece, pop on the bottom. And you want to pop it in the centre of this piece. So it's still, mine's still a little bit tacky. I'm just going to line this up so just so I can count. Um, if I line it up so it's four. One, two, three, four and a half. One, two, three, four, three and a half. So I need to come across a little bit there. And just make sure. Yeah, I think that's about right. Because this should sit perfectly in line with the trays when they join. Okay, so just go on under that tray there. But if you're if you're using the same glue as me, then it will you'll be able to, you've got time to still lift that up because I did put quite a bit under here. So I would say use a liquid glue on this one because having that little bit of wiggle room and to be able to add things in like that is always handy. So, all right, I'm going to make sure this is all dry now. Okay, so now we want to attach the trays to the hinges. So all you're going to do is you're just going to put a little bit of glue on this corner of the tray so it sticks to just the top half of that hinge. The bottom half you don't add any glue to because that will always have to open and you want it to pull that tray out as it does. Okay, but once we add the other bits on, which I'll give you the measurements for in a minute, that will secure the tray even more and give it, I guess, kind of like the, the feet to the support at the front. So what I would say for this bit to make sure that you get it, your glue in the right place is just bring the hinge round like so. Okay, I'm going to make sure we get all that straight, just roughly. And then with a pencil, if I can find one there. Just put a little pencil mark just there and there is where you want to add your glue. Okay, so I'm just going to add some glue there and then just sit it on the ledge so it sits right flush with the green one underneath in my case 
and the back is all straight and just bring that hinge around. You want it to have a real nice tight right angle. Okay, and that means everything will be straight. Don't worry about the, the front here if it's even dipping into the tray a little bit there. Don't worry about any of that because we're going to be adding another piece on. You, you're just focusing on getting that all straight. And also, the measurements of this, remember, is that one and seven eighths of an inch. So it won't come right to the top. You don't want it to. You want your tray to be within the back of this piece, but we're going to be putting the lid around. So again, mine's come up a little bit. That's fine. Don't worry. Trust me. <laughs> but make sure it is sitting on that ledge. That's the only bit you want to focus on, that and the right angle there. Okay, and then with the same with this one, I'm not going to draw a pencil because I kind of know where I'm going with this, but just um, do the same on this side. Look, the whole thing, they should sit side by side like that. Okay, so just make sure they're all where you want them to be. Okay, so I've got these two pieces here. I totally forgot about these when I was done on my original measurements. Now these are nine and five eighths of an inch by two inches and you want two pieces and along the long side you want to score at four. Okay, just on both pieces like so. Okay, just fold and burnish. And what's going to happen is you're going to stick it, you're going to add glue to the front of the top tray and all the way down the side of the top tray and that should stick in. Actually, it's a little bit long. You could do nine and a half. I'm sure on the other one it needed to be a bit bigger. But I guess nine and a half is better because again, it's that default length and that's why I originally done it. But for some reason I found, I thought it was too short. I'm just gonna take a little bit off. So just check it first and if you feel it's too long, just take a little slither off. It's, it's not an issue. But um, let's just try that again now. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so we're going to do this one first. So you're going to add glue all along. Actually, you know, you cover the whole piece of this on the outside because it's not sticking to the green underneath. So all of that piece and then all along here. And then all down here. Okay, and then get that one. And just make sure that it sits with the top of that top tray. And it will come right down to the end perfectly. It's that that will hold everything together. Make sure it sits on the bottom of the box. So can you see there? And it's running all flat there. And that, now, when you pull that tray out, you see it stands up itself. So it's just giving it all the support it needs. So it's got the hinge there. It conceals everything as well. But just when you go to close it, just make sure it does sit on the bottom. So then with this one, you want to do the same. So you want to add your glue all on this piece here. And then all along this one. And then again stick that all in place. Okay and so now just check, obviously move it away, you don't want any glue oozing out anywhere, but it should start to come out once you start working that hinge a bit, it will sit where you want it to. And then also that piece in the middle here when it comes up it will should line up within the middle of those trays there like so. So it will all be very neat. Okay and then with your lid so there's the top, it's going to flip like that. You just want to put glue all along this back piece. I just put the score line, pop all this in actually, like so. And then you want to make sure that the white piece lines up with the white piece underneath. They're both the same size, so you'll have that nice overhang. And because of that overhang, it will sit and conceal those boxes underneath. And you should get a really nice finish on the back. Okay, so now with this piece here, what you want to do is I'll just open that lid up. It's still drying a bit, but it's it's there, it's okay. We're just going to rest it. So close them up, bring this up, and just make sure it's nice and taut and just kind of bend it like so. And then you can just go in and you can lie it in a scoreboard if you want to and just find any track. It doesn't matter which one. I'm just going to line it up with that one there. Obviously make sure it's all straight and just kind of score that a bit better. Although I've, the score line's the wrong way, but anyway, you get the idea. It's <laughs> just to help you. You can just fold and pinch it, but now that will sit 
perfectly on there. So when I put the Velcro dot, it will just keep it closed. And I just think that's quite a nice way to have a concealed closure because I'm putting this in a gift bag and that's what I'm gonna really kind of secure everything so that any prying eyes won't see what they've got. But the idea is, is that this person can easily keep this, you know, and like I said, it does make a nice little storage box. So I'm just gonna use my, the 10 mil Velcro dots here. So I'll just grab a pair together. You can use magnets, of, of course, but um, I think Velcro's, Velcro's great. It's cheaper, does the job. I tend to use, like I say, magnets on mini albums and stuff. So just pop that in there, bring the lid down. You can push down quite hard on that as well because it's got the support and just open them up and then just make sure they're really stuck down like so. Okay, so that's that all done. Now I'm gonna stamp my sentiment and do my big bow for the top and then we are done. Okay, so there is the bow. Love it, love it in the red actually. It's really popped more than the others I think. So yeah, I think this might be my favorite one. This is using the Simply Made Crafts ultimate bow and I've done a separate tutorial on how to put it together which I'll link there and I'll share the links below as always so that's done and then what I've also gone ahead and done is I've popped the sentiment inside so anything you want obviously to go there you might just keep it with pattern paper or put the mirror there like I mentioned at the beginning I think that's a nice touch if you're going down that jewelry box route and then I've also gone ahead and put mats and layers on the fronts here the sides here and the sides here, okay? So you'll want two pieces of five and a quarter by one and three quarters. You'll want two pieces of three and three quarters by one and three quarters. And then you'll want two pieces of three quarters of an inch by five and a quarter, wasn't it? Yeah. Again, all those measurements will be in my blog. But look how great that looks now, I absolutely love these. And let's just have a little play around with the kind of configuration. Because you can have them however you want. So you could have these. So if you imagine the bounties fit perfectly, along with, you know, your galaxies, all your standard chocolate bars will fit in there perfectly. But you could fit, I mean, this is all the other ones, plus I've got them. You could do double layer of that. You could do double layer of them and a bounty. So you could get two, four, six, eight. You get nine chocolate bars on the bottom and this will all still close. So that's just, uh, you know, that's just one example. And I'll just put them up there just to prove it does. You've got lots of, you know, you've still got lots of, you know, clearance there for it. It fits perfectly. So I just need to spend some time now playing around with, you know, where all this is going to go. I've got pretty much all the chocolates. I've got one more that I need to get. That I know that person loves um, and I know it will fit in there perfectly but um, yeah I think they've turned out great and like I say if you're using them in your craft room you're now just going to fill it up with brads and all bits and pieces just keep it in your bedroom maybe with some jewellery in I just think they've got so many functions and I really do and uh, yeah I just love them so just bringing the other one there I haven't done the tags I do think I'm going to take them off this they're only tied with a bow and I'm going to put them on the actual gift bag because these will be the actual tags so you know when you take that off you know they're they're, they're not ruined you know they can obviously be used for what they want so this is just using let me just quickly show you so I've used that one there which is that big tag which is the it's just called twas tag by woodware and then this one because I've just stamped those images is the hand-drawn greetings which you've seen me use a few times now again all those links will be shared below but they're lovely big stamps and um, yeah I, like I said I think I'm going to stamp a ton of these and just have them all for most of my um, gifts this year Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. I know a lot of you are going to really enjoy this one because a lot of you that follow just love making the gift boxes and um, and storage ideas as well. So I think, yeah, I really do hope that you enjoy it. Please share them over on Mixed Up Crafters. I always look forward to that. And as many of you do, I know it's such a lovely group over there. I know I keep saying it, but it really is a lovely group. So head over if you haven't. And yeah, thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed today and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.